Hi there, and welcome to the Read All Over show presented by Lit Carnival and me, your host, Toy Thomas, author, blogger, and reading advocate. I am especially excited about today's guest. L. Diane Wolf describes herself as spunk on a stick. Let's meet L. Diane Wolf. Hi, how are you? Good to see you again. Yes, it's been a while. It's nice to be like face to face. As close to face to face as we can get being a good three, four hours apart, but that's okay. Exactly. So before we dive into things, I always just um, give everyone an opportunity to just tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Once again, Al Diane Wolf. I am happily married and living in North Carolina with uh, two cats, no kids, two cats, no waiting. Um, <laughs> I am also an author of seven, eight, nine, ten, upcoming 11 books owner of Dancing Lemur Press, and we have about 70 plus titles now through Dancing Lemur Press. And so I'm very, very excited about that. And when that's, we've been around Dancing Lemur Press about 14 years now. Nice, I, 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 I very much enjoy the content that Dancing Lemur Press puts out. So um, we, may, we may have to do another interview for that another day, but I wanna focus on you today. Um, before we get into the four segments of the show, I know from personal experience that you have had a couple of opportunities to appear at like conferences or book fairs as a programming guest. Um, I know for me, meeting you at the Hampton Roads Writers Conference was like the highlight of that event for me. <laughs> like, up behind me and I was like, oh my goodness, it's you. So um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your experience being, you know, a programming guest. What kind of things have you done? A uh, whole bunch of different ones over the past 20 or so years. And actually, the delight was meeting you because you were so excited. I was like, someone's excited to meet me. I love it. <laughs> I was. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is like I said, some of the concerts I've done in Virginia, South Carolina. I've done ones that are just, just book festivals and ones that are actual conferences and stuff. And it's funny because my nickname is Spunk on a Stick. I've had people come up to me and it's spunky, you know, they don't even say my name. They just say it's spunky. You know, I've heard my name yelled across a bookstore before. It's spunky. It's like, okay, I'll take it, whatever. Um, some of the fun ones, like I said, the, the one at Hampton Roads Writers Conference, that was a lot of fun. Probably the biggest, neatest one I did was in Louisiana. Um, Jessica, one of the... Uh, authors from the Insecure Writer Support Group and Anthology, uh, TikTok, Jessica Ferguson. Yeah. Uh, she recommended me to come down there. And, I, and when they contacted me, I was like, you do know I live in North Carolina? Like, oh, sure, we'll fly you down. I'm like, I'm going to Louisiana. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> but that was especially neat. Just like I said, it was very, in, it wasn't as much smaller, but it was very intimate. And it was just kind of special because my very best friend had just moved to Texas. And I was like, when am I going to see her again? She drove in because she lives in South Houston and drove in for the conference. So I got to spend the whole weekend with her too. Great excuse to connect with the person. Yes. Yeah. I love that. That's so <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for just sharing a little bit of that. Like I said, for me, it was a highlight. Um, you know, it, it's one thing to go to these different events and of course, you know, learn things and pick up, you know, reading materials, but um, after following you on your blog and Dancing Lemur Press and just for a while meeting you, it was just, it really was a delight. And now I get to interview you on my channel. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, fun. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to dive into the first segment of the show that I call On the Bookshelf. This is where I get to know a little bit more about you as a reader. I feel like all writers should be readers. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell people how much to read, but I feel like if you're going to, you know, do the craft, you should study it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So my first question for you, let's see, I have, oh, what is your preferred book format as far as your consumption? Is it, you know, digital, print, audio? How do you like to enjoy your books? Usually uh, uh, with fiction, it's kind of split between doing it on an, as an ebook or a physical book. When it's like nonfiction, as far as like inspirational, instructional, uh, you know, a marketing book, I like to have a physical book because I'm a highlighter. Exactly. You want yeah. For those of you who don't want to touch your book, sorry, I highlight, I tabs, it's a mess. Um, now, I will say for like certain things like cookbooks, I am, love to download a cookbook and just go through it and write the ones I like down and everything. But 
you know, when fiction, I, I tend to read more with a physical book. Okay. I like that. Um, oh, this is an interesting one. So has there ever been a movie or TV series adapted from a book that you actually enjoyed as much as the book? Not, 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 to, not necessarily more, but as much as the book. As much as well the the big one of course that always comes to mind is like lord of the rings okay I hate to say it i like the movies better <laughs> <laughs> i mean i read tolkien when i was in grade school and you know for the sixth grade or grader trying to slog through that with all that description it's really challenging so that's why i thought the the movies captured it very very well yeah i think that's one thing that a lot of times the complaint when you go from a book to a movie is that they cut out a lot of stuff. But in Lord of the Rings, that was the good thing because you got to skip over a bunch of pages of long descriptions. I remember, I think it was The Hobbit where he spends, um, what, a whole like page and a half describing like a doorknob. Like, we don't need that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. So, yeah, you have to skip all that because he just got to show it and you saw it and marveled at it and then you moved on. Exactly. All right. I like that. So one more. Um, what would you say has been the best book you've read recently? Best book. Can I be biased? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably one of the best ones, uh, especially rereading it for like the 50th, 60th time, helping him edit it. Uh, Blood Red Steel by Damian Larkin. His third Mars book comes out in a couple months. And uh, that one, like I said, it, the more I read it, you know, I'm just, you know, been with him for three books. It's like, every time I read it, it's, I'm just so attached to the characters. You know what I mean? So even after reading it dozens of times, <laughs> I'm still really enjoying it. But also I gotta say, I, I'm really enjoying uh, Bubba and Squirt's Sherry Ellis's. The review copies just came in today for the fourth one. Oh, I'm so excited. Cool. So those are always fun to read too. Yeah, I've enjoyed some Bubba and Squirt stories. <laughs> So well, we got three more next year. So just for the viewers, in case you're not um don't know what, what we're talking about, these are books that are actually from Dancing Lima Press. Lima Press. Which she owns, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that's terrible because I don't have as much time to read other stuff because I'm so busy reading submissions, reading the books we're gonna publish. You yeah. know, this last year, four of my own. I have to go back and reread. So that's been a lot of my reading time. And, you know, that's, I think that's just kind of part of the biz, you know, and which is, I think is a perfect way to segue into the next segment, because this is where we get to talk about you as a writer and your process. So let's see what I have. So this a segment I call the open book. And let's see here. So for you, when it, when you start that creative process, when you're working on a brand new story, what would you say comes first, the character, the setting? or the story a little bit probably a little bit about a little bit of the story but a lot of the characters and actually what really always comes to me first is just one key scene with the characters okay and that sticks because i mean i'm i don't know if you remember the insecure sport people question last month about where do you get your ideas from I was, that was mine. I was the one oh, that said I, mine come from dreams. So I always will dream a tiny snippet of a story. And if it sticks with me, I start expanding. Okay, what were these characters doing? And like I said, almost all of the stories I've ever written have come from a snippet of a dream. That is so cool. I would say about 50% of my stories also come from dreams. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I think as writers or just creative people in general, you all the time kind of have these creative things kind of popping up and at mm -hmm. night when you are just kind of completely free and you don't have all these other things bogging you down, that's when some of those ideas really get to solidify in your brain. Yeah. And when, this is a funny thing with dreams is, is because you're, you're there, you're involved, you're feeling it. So when you wake up, if you remember, if you remember it, you've got <laughs> strong feelings about it and that helps, it helps writing it too. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's really cool. So let's see, the next thing I have, let's see. Um, okay, so do you rely on critical feedback either from like paid contractors or maybe professional peers 
or are you more of a write it until it feels good for you kind of person? <laughs> I will usually write it, you know, I'll write it all out and polish and polish and polish and polish a whole bunch, run it past my husband. God bless him. <laughs> he has read everything I've ever written, whether it's his genre or not, he will read it. And then it might go to a couple of petite partners and then it goes to uh, a professional editor. Okay. So you, you kind of have a, a little process where you, you feel good about it, but you run it by the hubs. And then <laughs> once you <get> <laughs> that's when you move on to maybe some other like beta readers. Yeah. I've read it by him first. Cause just make, just to give me the overall idea of the story and by also, by give hand? Me, huh? By hand? <laughs> no, I let him read the whole thing. And then I also want to know what, you know, did I get the men's point of view, right? Oh, yeah. Does it sound like a man? That's probably the one of the main things I'm trying to get from him. In addition to just, does the whole story jive? That makes sense. I mean, a lot of writers now are using what they call sensitivity readers if they're writing about like different cultures and places. Mm -hmm. and like that. I mean, it, it used to just be a matter of doing good research, but now it's so much more than that. So really sometimes getting that feedback can be critical to your story. Oh, yeah. Or getting even some of beforehand, because like I said, with words, these latest stories like the, the shark, the one that just came out is based in the 90s, Australia. And so I contacted Linda Young because she lives in Australia. I even and contacted Denise Covey, too. And I, the fun thing with Linda, she gave me a whole bunch of slang terms oh, that yeah. were used in the 90s, mid 90s. So I had fun with those. I mean, I learned new things. Daggy pants. I'm wearing my daggy pants. That's yeah. when you're just being all casual. I'm like, I like that. <laughs> That's cool. Especially when you can tap into that little network of, you know, I mean, all of those insecure writers in that one group being able to kind of tap into and say, hey, you live there. What can you tell me about that place? Like, that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I could do the research, the Google and all that, figure yeah. out where was stuff at the time. But what was it like? Right. You know, you lived it. What was it really like? Yeah, I like that. Nice. Let's see here. Do we have one more for this section? Okay, so this one <laughs> can sometimes be a tough one, but I, I have faith in you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you mentioned, you know, you have going on with like 11 titles. So I know you've written nonfiction, which I love your nonfiction. You've done um, Young Adult. Your current series is what some people might classify as like fantasy because it's a little bit of fantasy science fiction. Of course, there's the romance element to mm -hmm. it that I appreciate. So all of these different genres that you've kind of dabbled in, which of those would you say is your favorite to write? I'm really enjoying the, the paranormal romance that I'm writing now, even though, like I said, with four different creatures and the last one being more science fiction, although it does have a paranormal element, I'm really enjoying that. Um, probably what's easiest to write is the nonfiction. It really is. I just, I just, and my brain works that way. I mean, I remember when I was first writing Overcoming Obstacles with Spunk. I mean, I literally had cl clipped all the little parts that I wanted and I laid them all over on the floor. Okay, these all go with chapter one. These all go with chapter two because this is what that topic's, you know, I just started grouping them that way. And it sounds like a crazy way to do it, but that's how I managed to get the whole thing to flow together. So I love writing the paranormal because it's not that's fiction. That's fun. I'm probably a little bit better with the nonfiction. All right. I, I can respect that. I, like I said, I, I'm not a big nonfiction reader. I, I know I should read more of it. I read a lot of, of course, you like to maybe hone my skill or develop myself as a person, but I actually do enjoy reading your nonfiction books. I use them as reference all the time. So. Well, good. That's good to hear. Well, that's the nonfiction. That's mostly what the kind of stuff I read is publishing uh, motivation, making yourself a better person, that kind of, I mean, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, awesome. All right, so now we are going to get into the good stuff. So <laughs> we're going to move on to what's called a book signing, and I, if it's okay with you, I want to focus on this current series that you're working on. Okay. Right. So the first question I have is, where did the inspiration for the In Darkness series come from? The whole idea, like I said, I think it started, the first two I wrote were Vampire and Werewolf. And the Werewolf's the one that's about to come out or has just come out. When I think it will just come out by the time everybody sees this. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
those two I had written several years ago, polished them, but I just never had time uh, to do anything with them. But I kept thinking, you know, both of these characters are, they're in darkness. And of course it's romance and it takes love of a love to bring the light and bring them into the light. And that's when I was like, okay, what could the other, it can't be just, they're, they're short. It has to be, if I'm going to make a book, it's got to be at least four. And that's where once I started brainstorming, and putting ideas together, the shark was just an inspiration from a movie I'd seen years ago that I got that one. And then the last one, The Alien, was actually a story I wrote in my 20s that completely revamped because I was like, yeah, there's not much of anything I can use. I can use the idea of what I was going to do, but that's about it. The rest is just awful, awful, awful. You know, you, you get better as you do it. And like <laughs> I said, once I had that, I was starting to call it foreign darkness. And I was like, well, what if? I make them novellas. What if they're individual and they're just ebook? What if I keep writing more? Well, I can't stop it. <laughs> Call it four. It's done. Hey. So that's where, and I do have an idea for a ghost one. I've got the most amazing ending in the world. I've got a beginning. There's just no middle yet. <laughs> I'm excited. I, I mean, I, I can't speak for everyone else who's, you know, reading and reviewing the books, but I love the fact that they are novellas. Um, I typically, when I sit down to read fiction, I do want it to be long or I want it to be super short, like a short story, but I mm -hmm. am finding that just consuming it in this, this like size, it's, it's just enough to kind of draw you in. And then you're like, oh man, I can't wait to see what the next story is. You know, like, <laughs> it's very much reminiscent to my days of, um, reading like comic book series and mm -hmm. um, getting to that next story, but being satisfied with what I got from the first one. So I hope you do get more inspiration to do more. <laughs> well, if I can get that saggy, find, find the middle. I have no middle at the moment. I mean, I'm serious. The ending is killer. And again, the ending came from a dream. Wow. That The ending was the dream. And that's why I probably why this one I'm really struggling because it's the very end. And I'm like, okay, how do I get to that point? Well, fingers crossed for you. Yep. <laughs> Um, so the next question that I have is, um, so, and again, I understand the nature of, you know, writing and publishing. So if you can't answer this one, I'll understand, but I'm going to ask because maybe you can, and us fans will be like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> is there <laughs> anything that at some point is going to tie these stories together outside of the in darkness theme? No, they're just that that is going to be the theme. So, like I said, once once all four are out, if I haven't, you know, by the beginning of next year, if I haven't got that ghost story going, it's I'm just going to be like, OK, we'll do that someday with, for fun. I might really put all four in a volume and call it four in darkness and have it as a physical book so that I, you know, so I can have a book, too, because it's nothing funner than and you have to agree than to holding your very own book. Oh, it's yeah. kind of hard to sit here and hold my little iPad and go, yep, yeah, that's the cover. <laughs> yeah. Having a physical copy is like, there's something special about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's see. And lastly, for this segment, um, the stories that you've come up with, um, they're so creative. Um, there, in, in what, what you're doing with some of them, like the, the vampire, um, and the werewolf, um, haven't read that one yet, but I'm just assuming, um, you're not necessarily starting, you know, creating something brand new, but you are coming up with really creative, like twists on these tales that maybe seeing something from like a different vantage point. And so I was, I, I know I was definitely caught off guard by the way the shark story played out. So like, where do you think that kind of inspiration to come up with these twists and turns that don't completely rewrite the story, but actually improves on something that's already like a staple? Well, like, especially with like the the werewolf and the vampire, I mean, there's been a hundred, been a million stories about those, you know? And so I just had to take, okay, just do something a little different, treat them more as a person that just happens to be a vampire like i said it could this they didn't even have to be vampires going on that quest they really didn't but it worked to make them that gave it something a little you know a little more danger you know for the girl going along with them and everything 
And then, of course, with the shark, that was easy. I, I guarantee there is not one romance book out there with a shark. Not one. <laughs> <laughs> that story was the one where I was just like, she's really got something here. <laughs> And with the werewolf one, like I said, it's it's most werewolf, you know, more werewolf movies, they're mean, they're going to rip your, you know, they're going to kill you. And then most werewolf books, he's the alpha male. Right. Or maybe she's the alpha male, one of the two, all big dominating. So I went with a very different direction on my werewolf. I did not make him at all an alpha male. Wow. I am so excited to read this book. <laughs> <laughs> series so um but yes all right I'm gonna stop fangirling and <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're enjoying I really am <laughs> yeah, I mean, well that's why I mean I I do these interviews totally just as a book lover you know when I meet an author or discover their work and I'm like let's talk about it online I want other people to like see me geeking out over these stories so uh, let's move into our final segment. This is the silly section of the interview where I just ask like some random questions. Sometimes asking random questions tells you a lot about the person. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> we'll find out. Don't judge a book by its cover. Your first question, what would be five songs that would have to appear somewhere in the soundtrack of your life? Uh, I can go with my five favorites. Last Chance by Shooting Stars, Ice House by Ice House, uh, Voices of Babylon by The Outfield, Learning to Fly by Pink Floyd, and 10538 Overture by Electric Light Orchestra. <laughs> oh, that's right. You you really love them. I've, I've seen like you blog about them. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a funny, here's the crazy thing I do. I make favorites tapes. My husband's like, I couldn't put my favorites, but I have my old favorites they're all nice and in order and then all my favorites after that and that's like 12 more discs cds worth you know playlists on my ipod on my i put them on disc too just to have them so oh, yeah i hate to say it i my, my top 20 i definitely get to rattle them off in order wow <laughs> <laughs> that, that's good i i definitely feel like music is just part of if you're a creative person you've got to tap into music at some point so i love it <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this next one, <laughs> this is this is just one of those ones. I, I love throwing in a question like this just to kind of pick with people. So it's not, I'm not going to be mean, but <laughs> let's mm -hmm. say you lose a bet and you have to be stuck with one hairdo. Now, I love your beautiful hair. <laughs> but <laughs> imagine for just a moment that you have to be stuck with either a mullet, a mohawk, or an afro. Which one are you going with? Oh, wow. Oh, let's go fun. Afro. Yeah, I, I would I would totally go that route as well. I feel like that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so the last one, um, this is this is just me being the geek girl that I am. Um, uh, I I love all kinds of stories, um, but it did, I think a lot of my love for the stories as, as an adult started from as a kid um, reading, you know, stories of Peter Pan, but then also reading a lot of comic books. And so mm -hmm. I'm very much like into that idea of like the superhero. So if you were going to be a superhero, what would your superpower be? Probably, oh goodness, somewhere between invisibility and, or flying. However, the the chick from the second Deadpool movie, what's your superpower? I'm lucky. I'm like, <laughs> I love that. I loved her. I'm like, what? she really is. It's like yeah. she's like invincible because she's lucky. It's like that one would be kind of fun too. Yeah, I would I would love to have Domino's power just to whatever <laughs> we just have good luck. <laughs> yeah, I mean it just it was so funny. It's not a superpower. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> It works for her every time, so. <laughs> yes, and it does, so we'll go with that. Exactly, I love it. <laughs> uh, well, we have come to the end. Um, I've had such a good time. Again, I love the fact that we were able to kind of, you know, meet face-to-face -face, um, again. Um, before uh, we wrap things up, go ahead and tell the viewers where they can find you or your work online. Well, you can find uh, most of my books available anywhere online as ebook or in print. And uh, you can find me at spunkonastick.net. 
or .com. It comes up both ways now. <laughs> and then from there, you can find me. Um, I'm not on Twitter, but I am on Facebook. I've got a blog. And then, of course, through Dancing Lee Mari, that's where I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Nice. So that's where I actually have a lot of fun with the Instagram, even though it's Dancing Lee Repressed, because one picture will be our book stuff. And the next one's usually our, uh, my cats. So I know, I like you like, if you like cats, follow Dancing Lee Repressed. You get to see a cat every other picture. Very nice. All right. So we are wrapped up, everyone. Be sure to stick around for the credits because, you know, I always have something fun to share there for my Patreon subscribers. Diane has something very special just for you. And until next time, guys, stay safe, be blessed, and have fun reading.